I'm Sean Kantayashi, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about my life with schnauzers and the people who love them. I'm inviting you to have a cup of tea or coffee, whatever you enjoy drinking. I've got mine seeping here. Today, I happen to be having one of my favorites. This conversation is one I've been thinking about for a long time and I thought it would be really nice to just sit on this beautiful spring day and have a cup of tea with you. Humans and dogs are pack animals and we thrive when we have a pack around us. As we experience life transitions, changes, as we intentionally make changes in our lives, the pack around us matters. We use many different words or phrases to describe the idea of community. Pack, tribe, team, soul family, peeps. What's your favorite word? A cherished friend of mine says, we are better together. And she is right. When we have that soul family, that pack, the team around us that sets us up to thrive, we are better together. We learn together. We experience life's adventures together, both the highs and the lows. We feel like we have support. We accomplish more and feel better about our lives when we're authentic, when we share, when we connect with each other. And when our values show up in the community, the team, the soul family around us. I'm a huge believer in the power of teams. And in fact, for those of you who know me primarily as a schnauzer breeder, my real profession is as a consultant, a coach that helps organizations build high performing teams and creates cultures where people can thrive. And so my intention is to bring that, to have that I am very grateful to this community that we are building together here on YouTube. This community that is enabling us to learn and share and grow together around our passion for our tribe, our pack with our beloved fur babies. We are a community of people who both love our dogs and also want to create a community of expanding love and joy in the world. We know that our actions and our relationships matter. I thrive in relationships. I know that about me. The quality of the relationship, the conversation, the connection matters to me. And I wanted to take a few moments here in this video to just really highlight, call out some of the people in this YouTube community that we are creating who have made a profound impact on me this year. And I am very, very grateful for you and the way in which you show up in this community. So while I'm sipping on my tea here and thinking about some of the ways in which this community has shown up and uh, really supports me in my life, I wanted to ask you to think about that too, right in the comments below. Perhaps something you've learned from this community, perhaps something you've learned from each other in the comments, the questions. Tree, have to start with you. Tree, you're making me a better dog breeder by the questions that you ask, the things that you share, the suggestions that you make to me. Thank you. I am so grateful, Tree, for our friendship. And it, it was formed here in YouTube. You reached out to me, you started reaching out to me in the comments in some of my early videos. And over time, you decided to be on my waiting list to purchase a puppy from me. And as I began to learn more about you and we were sharing in the comments and then sharing in emails with each other, I am so grateful for your advice, your guidance. Tree knows so much more about all things veterinary and emergency medical and anything related to taking great care of puppies and dogs. And uh, I am just ever so grateful for your advice. You majorly influenced 
my puppy care schedule and the kinds of things I think about and the questions that I've been asking. So Tree, thank you for being a part of this community and for what you have brought to me in my life. We are lifelong friends and I will be there for you whenever you need me. And I also have that same sense back and I'm very grateful for that. Susan, although we've never met in person, the questions that you ask me, the things that you share about yourself, your love for Shoden, your love for Charlie, your commitment to having wonderfully trained dogs, your willingness to learn from your dogs and share what you've learned from them. What an inspiration you are to me, Susan. I am grateful to call you a friend now. Again, even though we've never been in each other's presence, I feel like we have a really great uh, connection relationship and I always love seeing your comments and uh, your thoughtfulness in the way you connect with me here in our YouTube community. Your questions have often been the fodder, the inspiration for new videos for me. The power of a pack, the power of having friends cannot be understated in our lives. And for this reason, there have been many people who reached out to me and said, hey, I recognize rather than just getting one dog, I would really like to have two at the same time so that they have a best friend, a buddy, when I'm not available. And that's the way, in essence, Jim and Michelle became really good friends with me. They were already known by several of my close friends, but they were referred to me and they got themselves on my waiting list for a puppy and then they picked Humble. And then as they were here, they kept talking about, as they were visiting Humble and so forth, they kept talking about, we'd really like to have another one for Humble. Well, they decided they wanted one of Humble's litter mates. But at the time that they made that decision, that puppy had already been spoken for. And so I had my thinking cap on, what do I do about this? How do I make sure that Humble has a buddy and that their pack, they have a family of eight people in their family. And I realized they're going to want more than one dog because of that. When they're watching movies and such, multiple people are going to want that dog in their lap and cuddles and so forth. And so that was part of the reason why I decided to go ahead and have Sweet Tea be a part of a guardian home. Because that had not been my intention prior, but as I got to thinking about it and realized Sweet Tea could be a really good fit in their home. She now lives five minutes from me with Humble and they make such a sweet family. So it's an example of spreading love and joy in the world. It's an example of building our community, growing our pack, growing our team. And sometimes serendipity moments occur. I know if Jim or Michelle were here now, they would tell you that they are all better together because Sweet Tea joined their family when Humble did. Another similar example to this is when Whitney's family came to get her on her gotcha day. Her name was Winnie at that time, but they came together as a family. So grandma, grandpa, um, children, multiple levels of children. There was a lot going on and it was a really great visit, but it seeded an idea. They said, hey, let's get another one in our family system. And I love how that sense of community spirit, they said, okay, this grandmother has Whitney. Let's get our other grandmother. And they didn't know who. So they came and, and they called me and they started talking to me, asking questions. Hmm, who would be the right fit? And that's how it came to be that Liberty went to live in their family and Liberty now lives in a community environment is the way I like to think of it. Multiple generations taking care of Liberty and making sure that she is thriving, but in doing so, they're all spreading love and joy in their family as well as in the community where Liberty gets to meet other people and interact in the elevator. And I imagine the love and joy that's being spread by their family sharing liberty in the community where she is. When we have a common language, like the language that comes from training a dog together, 
identifying the words we're going to use, the hand signals we're going to use. In my Schnauzer puppy raising guide, I walk families through different terms or phrases that you could use for the various commands, the requests that you're going to make for your puppy. So sit down, stay. Those are made up words, correct, right? You could use something else if you wanted to. I use a places bed and when it clicked with me, I could say places everyone and have all my dogs uh, go get on the places bed. That was one of those fun serendipity moments for me, uh, creating that and then training my dogs and then having the people around me, my husband, my son, my sister when she visits, those kinds of things. Um, everybody knows that common language and when we create a common language like that, on a team, in a pack, we build our bond to be richer, deeper. So intentionally creating that common language, intentionally saying, let's train this dog together. Let's create this opportunity for all of us to learn together. It makes us better leaders. When we nurture our dog or dogs, we are triggering the neuro pathways of love in our own emotional body. We are then expanding love in our own lives. When we share that with others, love is being multiplied and it ripples into our communities. Our families, our teams, our corporate environments benefit from this too. Sometimes when I go into corporate retreat type meetings, I will bring a little group of puppies to play and I know that when a important decision is being considered, when people are putting their puzzle pieces on the table as a team is making an important decision where there may have been some conflict going on, I know that if I can get several of those people sitting around the corporate boardroom table holding a puppy or holding one of my dogs, they're going to make better decisions. They listen better to each other. Their neuro pathways, their brain, their emotions are more open to hearing, listening, uh, reflecting. Dogs and humans are designed to be together. We, human beings and dogs, were not designed to be alone. When we're left alone for too long, that's when we start to see unhealthy habits or patterns begin to emerge. We are building a team, we, you and me, we are building a community around us of expanding love and joy in the world with our dogs, with the community that we are creating here. So even if you don't own one of my dogs, even if you don't own a dog at all, the fact that you join me on this adventure, the fact that you have ah oh, moments, those moments where you go, oh, isn't that cute? Oh, isn't that sweet? Taking the time to do that, to smell the roses, if you will, the awe moments where you say, oh, that's so sweet, that's so thoughtful, that's so kind. When you do that, when you take that moment to do that for yourself, you're expanding the neuro pathways of love in your own emotional body. The lifestyle of expanding love and joy with our dogs and with this YouTube channel. We're building a team around us. You're a part of that team. It is definitely multifaceted and it makes my life better. When I think about this community, my pack, my dogs and my friends, I would be remiss if I did not mention to you the role that this beloved friend plays in my life. This is Heidi and You've met some of Heidi's family, who is now my family. So Alex and Anne are Heidi's children, and I think of them as my nephew and niece, Michael, her husband. Heidi is my resident photographer. Now, the fact is, Heidi is not a professional photographer, but you would not know that by the quality of photos that she takes. And she regularly is here taking pictures 
of my dogs and I am so grateful to her, but mostly I'm grateful to her for our friendship, but her sense of community and adventure with me about my dogs and puppies and where they go in the world. Oh, I'm so grateful. This sense of it being a multifaceted community, team, soul family, that makes each of our lives better. I would ask you to think about that for a moment. Some of the people who are on my team that you see regularly in this channel, Devin. Oh my goodness, when I think about Devin, I just well up. Devin is my, my soul daughter, if you will, and I just adore her. She and I are very different, as I'm sure that you can tell. And we have great respect for each other. We listen to each other. We care about each other through the care of and training of our puppies here. Kim and Ann and Sandy and Sarah, all of them are helping me with the puppies here. And while, yes, I could do, <laughs> I could brush and comb everybody, I could do the training on my own, the idea of bringing in team members who also have that vision with me, that shared vision with me, when we talk with each other, when we say hello and greet each other, those kinds of things, those are those special moments, those awe moments where we're taking the time to connect in a way that expands love and joy in the world. And all the guardian families who I co-own dogs with, those are great examples of rewarding relationships. Part of what makes those relationships so powerful and rewarding is right up front, we have an agreement. We have a contract actually that spells out what I'm responsible for, what my accountabilities are and what their responsibilities, their accountabilities are in our co-owning the dog together. But it does create this lovely sense of building trust, building relationship, building connection with each other as we take care of these mom dogs and these papa dogs. The guardian families who love and take care of the dogs in my breeding program, they are definitely a part of our team, even though not everybody in their family might watch our YouTube videos or regularly even comment in our YouTube community. They're still a part of this family, this soul family within the uh, Saucon Valley Cute and Cuddly Toy Schnauzers family. Every dog and every person wants to know that they're doing something that adds value. We all want to feel appreciated. We all want to feel loved. That's a common connection between dogs and humans. You are part of our pack. Another member of our community here in YouTube, whom I've never met, not met in person, but we meet regularly in the comments in the videos. Her name is Carol. And you will see that Carol, oh, I, I'm starting to well up. Carol comments on every video and I am so grateful to her. She asks thoughtful questions. She shows sincere interest. Carol has shared with me some time ago that she doesn't get out of her home much anymore. And so she was the one who said to me, hey, I love it when you take us along on your adventures. I love it when you bring your video camera and you show us what's going on in the world outside of your dog playpen. And she's the one who launched me into saying, okay, well, I'll start to share more about that. I'll take you along to the grocery store with me, Carol, and I'll take you to see what things I'm doing in the world, Carol, because you commented and you asked. So just kudos to you. And this goes out to all of you who have commented on or asked great questions, been thoughtful. There's so many of you that I, I just want you to feel, you know, if you've added comments and questions to my videos, know that I'm sincerely appreciating you and I feel like you're a part of our pack here. Those of you who are cheerleading for our dogs, our puppies, our training experience, those of you who get actively involved in the story of Mocha or Dazzle, Emma, any one of them, when you get in the journey with us, you are helping me, you are helping us 
Even if you don't own one of our dogs, even if you don't ever think you will own a schnauzer, by being here and communicating with us, sharing with us, expanding what we're doing, I'm grateful. If you've been following my channel for any amount of time at all, you already know this channel would not exist if it were not for Amy Lee, the Go Grower. Anyone who wants to do right by their dog, related to skin, coat, nail trims, taking great care of your dog, if you don't already know Amy Lee, you've got to go see the YouTube channel called The Go Groomer. She will teach you everything you need to know about caring for your dog from your home so that your dog's body, the coat, the skin, all of it is thriving. Amy created an amazing community of people who just adore their dogs. She has this membership community right here that I am a member of, and she role models what it means to create a community that is focused on loving and taking great care of our fur baby. The kindred spirits that we collect along the way in our lives reflect back to us what we value, what has meaning, what makes our lives richer. And I would definitely call Amy Lee one of those kindred spirit soul sisters, and just like the people I've mentioned before. When we love and care for a dog, a child, or even each other in this community, we are triggering our parasympathetic nervous system. When we are doing it out of that place of interest, passion, joy, that's expanding love. Caring for each other, asking great questions, showing an interest, affirming people, pointing out what they do well, is a way in which we can develop and expand our capacity for emotional engagement and love in our lives. If you regularly watch our channel here, you are a part of our pack and we are grateful for you. Even if you don't own one of our dogs, even if you will never own one of our dogs, by joining us and being on this path to create a pack, a tribe, a soul family around you that helps you expand love and joy in the world. You're mirroring the values of what we stand for here at Saucon Valley Cute and Cuddly Schnauzers. One of my favorite questions is, what would great look like? So whenever I'm faced with a challenge, a hiccup, a frustration, I regularly ask myself the question, what could great look like here? What could the next step be that would be inspiring or look like something I'd be happy about? What would great look like? That is a question that can help me to very quickly transform feelings of frustration or anger or potentially even bitterness very quickly into creating something better, into recognizing that we each, each one of us can be the predominant creative force in what we're creating next, in what we're feeling, and what we're expanding in the world. When I was feeling some frustration with some of my own skill and ability in doing some of the dog grooming that I needed to do at times myself. So if, for example, um, my dog groomer couldn't show up for the day for some very good reason and I needed to be able to handle something, I was finding myself feeling frustrated at times. But that's when I say, what would great look like? What could great look like? What could make a big difference here? And that was an inspiration for me then to uh, reach out to Amy and say, Amy, help me, help me increase my skill level. And she certainly did. Hopefully you've seen some of those recent videos both on Amy's channel and here on mine, where we're taking the skill level of me and my team to the next level. It's all born out of that question. Hmm, what could great look like? Okay, I'm frustrated here. What could great look like next? Let my mind paint that picture. 
Perhaps you already know that I enjoy words. I enjoy playing with words and exploring meanings in words. And many of you know that I play Wordle every day with my son. It's one of the ways that he and I uh, connect with each other early in the day. So usually one of the very first things I do after cleaning up after the dogs in the mornings, after feeding them, I sit down with my cup of tea and I play a game of Wordle. And each day when I get the Wordle result, I take a photograph of that. And then when my son has played the game, he sends me his results through the Wordle game. And I send him a photograph back of how I solved the word challenge of the day. It's just a fun way that he and I can connect every day and it says, hey, I'm thinking about you. It expands that sense of connectedness and caring for each other. You may wonder, why are you sharing that with us? Well, I mentioned I love to collect words and I love to collect words that have, I have different categories, if you will, of words that I collect. One is just words that are fun to say and words that have fun meanings. So serendipity is one of those. I know you've probably heard me say that word many times. Again, if you've been here for a while, that word comes out a lot because I love the word. Serendipity means a happy surprise. And so it's a great one to keep in our collection. As an executive coach, when I am working with executive leaders who are looking for ways to connect more with their family members or to do a better job of communicating, I encourage them to play along with me this word game, keeping a collection, a list, if you will, of some of your favorite words like serendipity, and then also keeping a list of words that mean the same thing. Tribe, pack, flock, group, team, for example. And when we're communicating using multiple words to make sure that our meaning is being conveyed to the other person because they may use words differently than we do. Soul family, community, tribe, pack. These have the same or similar meanings. And when I say several of these words together, you immediately get a concept in your mind that most likely represents the meaning I'm intending to convey. For example, the meaning of the word same could be conveyed with many different words. Copy, identical, or maybe even equal. And how about dazzle? What are some various words that you could use to also say dazzle, glitter, sparkle? I was thinking that it would be fun when we have litters coming up that we create some litters of puppies where the names of those puppies all mean the same thing, but it's a different word. Dazzle, sparkle, glitter. Is this making sense? So it occurred to me that yet another way that we could expand our community is by sharing some of these words. For example, how about a collection of words that could make great puppy names where each of those words either means the same thing or has some representation of what we're doing in the community that we're building here. I was imagining several different categories, perhaps. So words that would make great dog names or favorite words or words that you really have to be careful of because that word has two different meanings. And when we use those words, we need to make sure we might use two or three different words to convey the proper meaning with that word. I also love the challenge of learning new words and looking to see if I could say something more concisely or better with a different word. So any of that feedback, welcome to it in the comments below. Not just for this video, by the way, but for any of our videos. Anytime that you bump into a word that you find yourself saying, hey, that fits in this community somehow, just put it in the comments for any of our videos. Words matter. And 
Because words matter so much, the thought patterns that we have going on in our heads matter. You can see it in dog training. When a dog gets a concept, an idea, learns the new trick or the new thing that you're asking them for, they're so much more confident. It's true for us too. When we learn to use words and we learn to represent our thoughts and our feelings effectively, we become happier humans, just like dogs become happier dogs when they're well-trained. We create our futures with the words we say and what we are habitually thinking. So thus, the more intentional we are with our words and our word choices, the better we're going to be at communicating and creating the environments around us, the relationships that are meaningful to us. Creating futures where we will thrive, creating futures where our dogs will thrive, the words we use matter. This word game that I have been describing is one that I also love to play with young people and sharing with them that I would like them to bring me a new word, a new favorite word each time we meet. So when Penelope is here, for example, Penelope and I have begun to play this word game to collect words that we like with each other and share our new words. But I do that when I'm training a dog. So when we're teaching a dog sit or down or spin, we're teaching the dog a word, what it means and the concept. It's been a fun adventure for me using words that I love with younger people and then watching them come back into the next conversation that they have with me and say something like, I had serendipity happen. <laughs> now, of course, they're not using the context of that word correctly, but that's okay with me. The fact that they remembered the word serendipity, I love it. Yes, that's serendipitous. Perhaps you'd like to play along with this as well. Again, it all shows up in the comments on these videos. It shows up in the spirit of community. My father used to say to me that when we have this spirit of adventure, when we have the spirit that we're on a journey, life is much better. It's a gift to have a team a family, a community that's on an adventure, that's on a journey, that's on the path of life together, where we share our highs and our lows with each other. Many of you have shared some of the really fun highs with me, but also you've been there through some of the lows when Tiny Girl died. And last summer when we had a lot of puppies here and we lost our electricity for three days in the middle of sweltering warm weather and needing to hand feed a bunch of puppies overnight. Really, really difficult time. Some of you even pointed out that the fact that I hadn't had my nails done was a sign that I was not taking care of myself well enough and that I needed to do something about that. We share the highs and the lows. Please invite your community, your family, to join us here in the SVCC Toy Schnauzers community on YouTube if you think that they would enjoy the spirit of what we are doing here. And up next, I'm going to show you some video of me taking my dogs out into the community around the area in which I live as part of our adventure. So this is how I share my life with schnauzers and the people who love them. Mocha and Burberry, how about if we go on an outing? We're going to go to Luther Crest. Luther Crest is an assisted living facility where people live and they love the opportunity sometimes to visit with a little schnauzer. We're just starting on an outing today. It is a bright, sunny day with lots of spring flowers and blooming shrubs and, oh my goodness, trees galore that are just starting to bud. Today we are coming 
to Luther Crest. Luther Crest has a collection of individual cottage style homes as well as a larger facility, or that might not be the best word, healthcare center, wellness center, healthcare parking. Getting out the stroller. This is the main entrance and you can see beautiful little spring flowers and as you come in the front door here to luther crest this is the experience as you walk in the front door but there are lots of these little living room type environments throughout this uh, space and you'll see people uh, huddled having little conversations and so forth regularly in some of the spaces like this a lovely piano here luther crest is such a pretty place and there are lots of little park benches like this available that you can sit on and enjoy the beautiful spring-like flowers it is beautiful here yes so even though it's a bright sunshiny day here at luther crest in allentown pennsylvania it is still very cold outside Burberry, what a pretty girl you are. Yes. Hi, Mo. Burberry, you are such a sweet cuddler and you love cuddling and being held and saying hello and giving lots of kisses. You are the kissy girl. When we do therapy dog visits, we are often not able to video the specific uh, interactions. And so we can show our going in and our coming out but not necessarily the cuddling that's going on. Hello. Puppies love being a ray of sunshine when they come and visit. And now we are at Fresh Market. This is a big part of my routine and I appreciate that they allow me to bring my dogs. Are you poking out to see what's going on at the grocery store? Are you? You both can look out at the grocery store. People will stop and talk to me about my dogs and they'll want to pet them and interact with them. And I just visualize those interactions being a little dose of spreading love and joy. And grocery store trips like this are really great because they see me, the dogs see me step away to go pick something up, put it in my cart, and then they see me come back. So these are just really great ways for them to get comfortable with me walking away, coming back. Some of my favorites are these Synergy Kombuchas. Pure love. Love the names of these. What do you think? Do you like the Synergy Kombucha too? puppies you are. So even though it's a cold day, they're bundled up and out walking their little doggy. I live in the Saucon Valley and that's why Saucon Valley Cute and Cuddly Schnauzers is the name of my business. But the promenade shops here in Saucon Valley have lots of shops and we regularly go for a stroller ride around the shops. And you can see I've worn these little fur babies out today. Spring is popping out all around us.
these lovely daffodils. My neighborhood is full of spring. Thank you for enjoying being on this adventure with me, my life with the schnauzers, and being one of the people who loves them. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit subscribe right below. Give it a thumbs up, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Don't we, Mocha? And those of you who said Mocha needs to be in a traditional schnauzer, we listened to you. Here he is. Today, Anne groomed Mr. Mocha in a traditional schnauzer cut because you all asked for it. There he is.